face that this world has forgotten. Mm, what's up, guys? And of course, welcome back to another video from your true love, course, as Garander. And today's video is definitely more of a talkative video and actually kind of unscripted. It's a thing that I really want to talk about for quite some time and it has a lot to do with League viability uh, in contrast to Tears viability and Pokemon's in mind because if you follow me around you're very aware of that I play a lot of leagues Leagues are very different from Smogon Tears when it comes to prepping in mind since of course the Smogon Tears on its own are just a standalone team utilize that with full capabilities against a decisive matchup and um, that's good and all, and it's quite honestly, is the best way of playing Pokemon, if you ask me. Uh, but Leagues is definitely more tutored towards the people that already are clearly knows about Smogon, but also knows about Pokemon in general, and want to spice things up. For quite some time, there was something called mixed tiers between us Pocketubers, and it basically meant that you, you could use one OU Pokemon and build something around that, and still not be heavily punished. And I do believe Leaks kind of solved that. That was definitely a more constructive way. Leaks are actually getting even smarter as, of course, this generation starting off. Generation 6 was definitely the highlight of Leaks, where Constable showed out and, of course, utilized to the fullest. And I do believe a lot of good ideas come from that era. And here we are today. I'm running my own league today, of course, with Valhalla Pokemon League. And it's a league I firmly believe are doing a few things tutor towards people that are just enjoying playing the game. It's not too competitive and that is for me what League is all about. It is about getting Pokemons you really like or want to try to construct with and try to balance in them out. And that's basically what League comes down to is to get a lot of Pokemons that are tutored towards your liking to be able to deal with a lot of Pokemons that are in other Pokemon players liking. So the reason I'm making this video is more focused to actually talking about Pokemons that are Famously strong in tier format, but maybe not as strong or maybe even stronger in leagues Because there is a very bad misconception that Pokemon that are um, Of course in OU are automatically of course better in league format and it holds true somewhat a lot of offensive Pokemon are still as relevant when it comes to actually the leagues themselves but also a few very very strong hitters that are actually kind of limited in leagues so it's very important to mention them here, and I should also mention, of course, the reason Lander's Eye is here is because that is a Pokemon that you are in Ubers and the Smogon series for very good reasons. It's not often you see this Pokemon banned in leagues. It is having some kind of conjunction to it. It is a very, very powerful Pokemon. I wanted to understand that that Pokemon might be too powerful. But due to the prepping construction, a lot of people do not threaten or feel not threatened about this Pokemon. Mainly because with the incarnation of, of course, getting a preparation towards a very dangerous Pokemon, you are very, very capable of actually solving an issue in contrast to Smogon, where the threat is just an instant, and if you don't have build for it, you cannot deal with it. You actually get an only chance that Lee comes to do you so. So with that said, we're going to talk about three Pokemon that come to mind that I really want to talk about, and just... The reason is it's here between, of course, the Contract League versus Tears. The first one is actually Keldeo. Keldeo is a very, very famous specs user. Uh, it's definitely one of the strongest specs in the game, mainly because of Secret Sword in contrast to, of course, Hydro Pump. It's a very, very strong Pokemon. It does really well in OU. I do believe in Generation 7 till now is actually UU, but it's definitely not going to stay because the, the water spam is just such a big deal. Uh, Keldeo is one of the greatest Pokemon introduced uh, actually ever and definitely in the Smogon concept this Pokemon does thrive really well but it doesn't do that in leagues uh, th this is definitely one of those Pokemon that it's so famous for how strong it is but it's so easy to prep for um, basically you has it has its dual stab if you have a Pokemon with water absorb just make it defensive and it solves the worst this Pokemon is usually forced to run the likes of Ice and Wind as a filler move and even at that, it's very, very easily checked. So this is definitely a Pokemon that, as stated, is easy to prep for, and therefore its league viability is actually a bit lower. Usually people avoid this completely because they're rather great Pokemon. It's an OU that could solve this issue either further, and usually people want a more bulky or war type, which means that Kelio never really fits that team. So it's very important to remember that Keldeo, while a very, very strong Pokemon and contender, is still a good Pokemon in the League format. It is just not as strong as it is in the Smogon Tears, and therefore it's very important to remember that how vastly different Smogon Tears can be for a League format, of course. 
So now that I mentioned, of course, one of the possibly worst League Pokémon, let's talk about probably the best League Pokémon, actually, Infernape. Now, Infernape is a Pokémon that it's in Yu Yu and Smogon. It's a very well-rounded Pokémon. It does really well in OU, but in Leagues, it just solves so much. There are very, very often that actually League finalists or actually best last game, of course, of the League have a team with Infernape. Infernape is a Pokémon that solves many, many, many issues. It has priority, of course, in Vacuum Wave, it has a dual stab that is perfect, it has speed tier, it's super relevant, it can set up rocks, it can go for slack off, it can set up with book up and nasty plot, and it just keeps going, even it's grass not to solve the worst issue of ground types. So this is a Pokemon that, due to its viability in flexibility, is an A rank in my book. Infernip is just that kind of mon, it solves so many things for a team naturally and of course with U-Turning and also Pivots. So Inferno definitely stands out as a Pokemon that maybe not too intimidating because it is in Yu-Yu and people tend to oh it's, it's not the ideal fire type. But as a standalone Pokemon the dual stab solves so many things. It's a very hard thing to prep for because it's move pulled broad enough to solve the issues that people could try to defend it with. So yeah, Infernape does fit a many role in a league where you can draft a lot of Pokemons. You want a Pokemon that can do it all, and this is definitely what Infernape does. And this is a very good prime example of a Pokemon that, in league concept, is invaluable. Even though in course Smogon Tears, it just is another copy paste fighting type. Here in league format, it's all or nothing. If you have this, you have a super great Pokemon. Now, another Pokemon that of course stands out that actually is surprisingly uh, are you at the moment is of course Necrozma. Why is Necrozma are you? Well, it's probably not going to stay, but the reason at the moment that it isn't as well rounded in Yu Yu is for one good reason. While it is of course super super defensive, it lacks something called spiking. Uh, what I mean by spiking is it lacks an ability or and status that makes it hurt more than it can do. This is a Pokemon that, due to its lackluster move pool, is very, very predictable in the Smoke and Tears. There are only a few sets that are crucial for it to work with. While it does learn a lot of things, it usually is locked to that 5 slot issue, which, of course, which move do I have to get? Psychic is not that good of an offensive attack. It usually forces all the Shadow Ball, but since it doesn't learn it, it's it's a, just a hard overall Pokemon to use. Now, of course, enter League format. Why does it work much, much better in Leagues? Its defensive capabilities are up there. It, I mean, we have a lot of bulky Psychic types, but those usually actually, of course, lack the thing this thing gets. Prism Armor, reducing the super effective damage. It's an importance because that means if you're hopefully not 50% hits every time you get a super effective move towards you, you're actually able to recover. And that's a big deal for this type of concept, because this concept Pokemon is actually thriving against doing a lot more than just hitting things. Necrozma's main perk, outside of the course, is other bulky brethren in the Saga type of the course, Mushana, Slowking, Slowbro, is that Necrozma is able to set up rocks. It's such a big perk for a tanky Pokemon such as this. And not only that, it does have such of course Mushan and the other ones is that it has X ability or of course recovery. But not only that, its main perk here somewhere down the line is while they are bulky and slow, Necrozma is bulky and fast. And that's a very big difference. The only thing to holding Necrozma back in the smoke material element is that it's not fast enough. It's very, very easy to actually wheel it down by a more offensive core team. When you can be more specific and tutor, of course, Necrozma towards a more defensive Pokemon is managed to deal with, Necrozma is actually one of those Pokemon that easily actually can knock out defensive Pokemon towards it. It is basically a wall breaker with very, very high defensive capabilities and, of course, Stealth Rocks. So it fits a lot of roles for a lot of teams, and that's why it's so actually underrated in League concept because the Smoke and Tears has this rumor about it that it's very, very hard to use, it's very, very predictable, but that's not only that's not necessarily a bad thing if you can be a specific set. And the Crossma has actually both a special and a very offensive good move pool. While limited, it can be specific. And consider, of course, the Keldia only have one working set. The Crossma is actually able to be wheeled down by actually doing two offensive variables, of course, a physical attack or special attack, and both works great with it. And of course, that said, it is not only hits hard, it is able to set up, it's able to set up rock, and it's just. In general, they're a po hard Pokemon to tackle naturally because it has so many ways of avoiding death, and that's why it's so well-rounded in League concept, as of course, Smogon Tears alone. 
So yeah, that's actually pretty much the video. Really, we just wanted to reach out about a few programs and while they are vastly different from one or another. And this is definitely something I could think about focusing more on actually comparing Pokemon to the leagues versus their tier more in depth for those who wonder. Tangrowth is also one of those Pokemon that are clearly a lot, a lot stronger in lead than Smoking Tears. It's actually utilized a lot more now today, so that makes me very happy. Definitely, I do believe the talent nerf it really affected it there. To some extent, most certainly. But yeah, how do you guys feel about this video? It's something that I really want to talk about. I enjoy Lee so much. And it's a big misconception that Pokemon that are good in tiers are good in leagues. And uh, I definitely believe Pokemon such as Kelio is a prime example of that. that. That's definitely not the case. Even Ferraform kind of falls in that kind of environment too, where yes, it's good, but it's not that good. It's definitely not a top of the line. A few Pokemon definitely can do its role probably better because it can like, survive certain situations so with that said guys what do you guys think are you guys thinking about anything about of course leagues and tiers in mind or do you guys play leagues on your own if sure make sure of course tell me about it what are the rules because leagues can be very very different we know one another and i definitely that, that is a big strong decision actually talking about leagues in mind because leagues are probably the future for people who enjoy just playing the game at the competitive scene, but don't want to play just smoke and rankings all the time. I do believe it gives the the game some survivability for a lot more people, and it's just incredible to talk about. So with that, so guys, thank you of course so much for watching this video, and I'll see you of course in the next one if there is another. And uh, yeah, till then of course, take care everyone. Bye.